Welcome back to the third episode of the series where we're adding the neat algorithm to the Chrome Dinosaur game. So let me explain how our dinosaur learns to play the game. We're going to create a population of dinosaurs and let them play the game. While playing, some of these dinosaurs will get further than others. Each dinosaur is given a fitness score. The further the dinosaur gets, the higher his fitness score. This dinosaur got furthest, so his fitness score is going to be the highest. In the next step, we can rank the dinosaurs from highest fitness to lowest fitness. The best dinosaur produce the offspring for the next generation by the process of reproduction and mutation. So now we have a new generation of dinosaurs that come from the best dinosaurs of the previous generation. And by repeating this process over and over again, the dinosaurs gradually get better from one generation to the next. This should give you a broad overview of how the NEAT algorithm works. If you want more detail on the NEAT algorithm and how the processes of reproduction and mutation work, I'll be leaving a link to the original paper down in the description below. So now let's jump into the editor and carry on from where we left off last episode. We're going to start off by adding a new file to our project. I'm simply going to drag it from the desktop into our file tree. Now this file is actually provided to you by the neat library and it will also be available on my github together with all the source code for this entire project. All of that will be linked down in the description. Now this file that I've just dragged in is the configuration file and it allows you to configure the neat algorithm so that it works just the way that you want it to work. If we have a quick look inside, you can see that there is a whole lot of different default parameters that are set. And I'm just going to briefly go through the most important ones. So the fitness criterion determines how the best dinosaurs are selected. Since we want the dinosaurs with the highest fitness to be selected, we're going to set this to max. The fitness threshold is simply an upper boundary. If we ever have a dinosaur that reaches this threshold, then the evolution process is terminated and we have a solution. Next is the population size. This determines the number of dinosaurs in every generation. Another important one is the activation function, which we're going to set to the hyperbolic tangent, short tan h. And this simply defines how the output is calculated given a set of inputs. And the final important one that I want to talk about are the network parameters. These allow us to specify what the neural nets of the dinosaurs are going to look like. We're going to give our dinosaurs two inputs and one output, and we're not going to have any hidden layers. The first input is going to be the Y coordinate of the dinosaur, which determines how high up on the screen the dinosaur is. And the second input is going to be the distance between the dinosaur and a cacti. And the output will allow us to determine whether the dinosaur jumps or not. These are the most important parameters that we're going to be working with. If there are any other parameters that you want to read up on, then I recommend having a look at the documentation. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description down below. It gives you a real good overview of all the other parameters and what they do. Now that we have an overview of what the configuration file does, we are ready to set up the neat algorithm in our game. So let's go to the very bottom of our main file and continue coding. First, we're going to create a run function, which takes as an argument the path to the configuration file that we just discussed. And this function is going to be the point of entry to our game. In this function, we're first going to configure the neat algorithm. And we do this by setting config equal to neat.config.config and then in parentheses, we add all the necessary arguments. Now these arguments are simply some defaults and for simplicity, we're just gonna keep them the way they are. And in addition to that, we also add the file path to the configuration file. Now that that's done, we're going to take care of the population of dinosaurs. So let's go ahead and add the population of dinosaurs. And on this population of dinosaurs, we want to run the evolution function 50 times. The evolution function is also frequently referred to as the fitness function. And it looks at how far the dinosaurs go and tell us how fit they are. Now remember, the fittest dinosaurs are used in the reproduction and mutation process to create the next generation of dinosaurs. We're going to look at the evolution function in more detail in just a moment, because we still need to run the function that we just defined up above. So we're going to create an if statement, if name is main, and within this if statement, we're going to set the local directory, then set the config path, and finally, we're going to make a call to the function run. Now let's go to the main function of the game that we created in the last episode. We're going to turn this function into our evolution function that I just mentioned a moment ago. We're going to rename this function into eval genomes. 
As the name of the function suggests, it is going to take care of the evolution of the dinosaur's genome. And into this function, we are going to pass in two arguments. The first are the genomes, and the second is the configuration file. Moving on, we're going to delete the dinosaur we created manually in the last episode, and we're going to add two additional lists. The first list is going to store dictionaries, and within these dictionaries, there's going to be information on every individual dinosaur, such as its fitness level, its nodes, and its connections. We're going to call this list GE, which is short for genomes. And the second list is going to store the neural net object of each individual dinosaur. And that's why we'll simply call it nets. And we also need to make sure that we add these two lists into the global variables. So besides the obstacles list, we have three empty lists. One for the dinosaur object, one for the genome, and one for the nets. To fill these three lists, we're going to create a for loop, which loops through all the dinosaurs in the population and gives every single one of them a dinosaur object, a genome, and a neural net. And since we want every genome to start with a fitness level of zero, we are going to set the genome fitness to zero. The next thing we need to do is we need to decrease the fitness level of the dinosaurs that run into an obstacle. So let's go down to the code responsible for the collision and add this line. By doing so, we decrease their chance of passing their genes to the next generation of dinosaurs. And let's go ahead and get rid of the user input line over here because we're no longer going to be controlling the dinosaur ourselves. The next thing we need to do is we need to pass the inputs of each individual dinosaur, which are its Y position and its distance to the next obstacle, into its neural net. And if the output of the neural net gives us a value that is higher than 0.5 and the dinosaur is not currently jumping, then we want to initiate a jump. The next thing we need to do is we need to define the distance function which we're using over here. So let's move up in our editor and define it just above the fitness function. Then we can make a minor adjustment to the remove function because now we're not only removing the dinosaur whenever it dies, we're also removing its genome and its nets. And the final thing we need to do is we need to go to the very top of our file and we need to add two modules, the math module and the neat module. And now we should be done. Let's see what happens when we go ahead and run this. As you can see, the first generations of dinosaurs act pretty randomly. And by chance, some of these dinosaurs get further than others. The ones that get furthest have the highest fitness score and are used in the reproduction and mutation process. And through this iterative process, the dinosaurs gradually get better until we have a dinosaur that manages to play endlessly. If this video helped you out, let me know by leaving it a like and a comment down below.